we're going to continue discussing about the natural cycles of this planet and its resources. And we're going to talk about this time the carbon cycle. Carbon is about the most, um, how would you say, it's about the most versatile of all elements. It can be combined with other chemicals to make things that are living. It can be combined with other chemicals to make things that are not living. And it, the structure of carbon is so amazing that you can use it to do all kinds of stuff, from the hardest of the hardest to the most essential that, uh, that exists in us. All right, so here is the carbon cycle. So let's start with this green stuff right here. That's plants, the, the flora, all right? And what you have is plants taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and converting it into something that is useful in a process called photosynthesis. And in photosynthesis, basically, the plants are absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and absorbing water from the roots, all right? And it converts that into glucose and oxygen. That oxygen is vital for all other living organisms on this planet. Glucose, now that is energy, it uses that to grow, to make more amino acids and all that other stuff, and then that allows it, the plant to grow big. Now, plants, when they die, they will decay, all right? And they will go into under layers and layers and layers of soil, all right? Plants can also be fed by living things, animals, right? And animals will also die eventually, and they can decay as well. Plants also transpire, and when it transpire, it will give up CO2 into the atmosphere. Plants also, be, also get converted from whatever they are into CO2 when people burn them or when forest fires naturally occur. And when also when plants die, some of the decay, the, the decay matter, instead of going into the ground, will go up into the uh, atmosphere. So that's the plant aspects of that. That's the natural aspects of the carbon cycle. And now we're going to talk to something way how humans interact with the carbon cycle. Now, when stuff gets decayed, over millions and millions and millions and millions of years, that organic matter becomes fossil, fossilized things. And these fossilized things are extracted by the oil and gas industry and by us so that we can make something useful out of it. We purify or distill these fossil fuels into different fractions of different parts and we use it for multiple things. We use it to build roads, we use it to build plastics, right? These plastics here, this plastic on this cover, plastic on this uh, camcorder, these plastics are all products of the oil and gas industry. And we use that in our homes, uh, we convert this oil and gas into electricity that we use in our homes. And in the process of that, we burn them. Or we put it in the cars, right? We burn the fossil fuels. As we burn the fossil fuels, just like this plant matter or these living things. When you uh, burn them, it will convert back to CO2. All living organisms, normal things that are not plants, they will breathe. And when they breathe in and out, they take in oxygen and they take out, give out carbon dioxide. This process this process is called respiration. In respiration, you have glucose with oxygen, right? That energy in our body plus oxygen is converted into carbon dioxide and water.
Okay? So, uh, also, when uh, carbon dioxide, when it's in the atmosphere, some of it will dissolve into the oceans, right? And then these dissolved uh, carbon dioxide becomes like the starting material that is needed in terms of making, uh, allowing certain shell animals make shells like oysters and stuff. All that shells they have, those are all just carbonate uh, materials, all right? So they make shells out of it. And when these uh, shell metals die, after millions and millions and millions of years upon layers and layers and layers and layers of other sediments and whatever, they go through a process called sedimentation and they become rocks and chalk and limestone, okay? These rocks are called chalk and limestone. These are used by us to make stuff and also used in industrial processes where we heat, use that to heat in our factories. And when we heat these things back in the factories, we release the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. All right. When we talked about complete combust, uh, burning the fossil fuels earlier on, we need to talk about the complete combustion of that. So any kind of carbon source, whether it's pure carbon, as in coal, or hydrocarbons, as in uh, oil and gas, when you burn that with oxygen, and if it goes on to completion, it should form carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide is definitely the mother load here. All right? So that, what does this tell us? This tells us that the Earth's resources is quite precious. We have non-renewable resources like this fossil fuels and this minerals, all right? When we mine them, when we dig them up, when we extract them from Earth, it gets released and probably takes millions of years before these minerals or this fossil uh, fuels gets replaced. And possibly, us humans wouldn't live as long. we probably go extinct by then. All right? So when we release all this carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere, nothing is absorbing it. We have limited amounts of vegetation to absorb this carbon dioxide. As if you can see, most of the CO2 goes carbon cycle goes this way, very little goes down here, all right? So we need to depend more or more on re renewable energy and renewable resources, like wind, like solar power, okay? We also need to put our focus on maybe potentially renewable resources, potentially renewable resources like biomass, because when we use, take biomass, we can replace them. Don't, I don't mean taking biomass from things that are wild, but things that we have domesticated or plant, planted. Fresh water could also be a potential renewable resources if we treat it right and pre-treat it and treat it after we're done with it. Uh, fresh air, make sure that we don't pollute the air when we burn fossil fuels. Let's treat it and make sure that whatever is released it's, it's clean and fresh, okay? So there you go, natural cycles and resources.